The Queen of Cam Once upon a time in the kingdom of Cam, which was nestled amidst serene landscapes and fertile lands, thrived under the king's wise governance. His open court welcomed all, offering justice and compassion to those in need. In the tranquil kingdom of Cam, the king Cam's gentle nature and empathy endeared him to his people. One fine evening, King Cam rode on horseback with a few attendants. As the sun set, they halted near a glistening creek. Halt! What a beautiful evening! Ah, a creek! This water looks like it could quench our collective thirst. As the king dismounted and approached the creek, as he knelt down for a refreshing drink of water, suddenly, a captivating melody filled the air. He looked around searching for the source of this celestial voice. His attendants were also mystified by this soothing serenade. Sire, I've never heard anything so soulful. What magical melody is this? I need to know where this is coming from. The ethereal song grew louder, leading the king to a tree nearby. There, perched among the branches, was a glorious bird with wings reflecting the hues of a rainbow. Gosh, what an exotic bird! The bird gazed at the king. Its eyes gleamed. Its beak and claws were made of gold, dazzling even in the fading evening sunlight. Aren't you a sight for sore eyes? Where did you come from? I can't thank you enough for your song has wiped out my exhaustion and my troops' fatigue. Oh dear, I just realized I have been talking to a bird. Only if I knew what species you are, I'd happily declare you our national bird. Observing closely, he realized the bird had an injured wing. Ah, you are injured, my friend. The king pulled out a special herb known for its healing properties from his sachet. He offered it to the bird, who hesitantly nibbled on it. In the blink of an eye, the injuries healed, and a dazzling transformation took place. The bird turned into a breathtakingly beautiful woman. She had a radiant face with almond eyes. Her hair waved to her ankles. She was dressed in the most gorgeous silks and decked with precious stones. What sorcery is this? Smiling softly, the young woman held out her hand and said, Hail, my savior. You have most kindly broken the spell on me. Now I belong to you. The king could still not wrap his head around what he saw. But who are you? She smiled again. Her pearly white teeth flashed and lit up her caramel face and she said, I'm Sangmo. There is no easier way to say this, but now I am your wife. But Sangmo, I didn't do anything. I was just drawn to you because of your bird song. Oh, my humble king, a gentle word, a kind look. A good-natured smile can work wonders and accomplish miracles. And you claim you haven't done anything. Overjoyed, the king put Sangmo on his own horse and took her to his palace. Then followed a very happy time for the king and his new queen. They had two twins, Declan and Dolma. Declan, Dolma, come here, my loves. What mischief are you two up to today? Look, Father, I made this horse all by myself. And I made a new dress for my dolly, Mother. These are wonderful, my little artists. You have such busy hands and creative heads. Just like your father, Declan, and your mother, Dolma. Huh? <sighs> they bring so much joy into our lives. Indeed, my love, you all do. That day in the woods changed my life. One night, Sang Mo's room is bathed in the soft glow of moonlight streaming through the window. Suddenly, the sound of drums grows from faint to loud. She jolts up, walks around to make out where this haunting melody was originating from. With trembling hands, Sang Mo reached for the doorknob. The door creaked open, revealing the queen's chamber. But there was something odd about the dance. Her eyes were shut. Her movements were jerky and erratic, as if she was entranced. Sangmo watched in horror as the queen's dance grew more feral and more frenzied. What on earth is she doing? 
That is so strange. Looks like ancient magic. Sangmo couldn't bear to watch any longer. Just as she was about to turn to flee, lightning struck when she saw a huge oil painting of this woman. It was clear she was the elder queen, King Cam's sister-in-law. Her husband, the king's brother, had gotten wounded in battle and was crippled. Fearing a fight in the family, Sangmo did not mention this to the king. Next day, a restless Sangmo strolled through the palace gardens, enjoying the warm sunshine and fresh air. She was trying to forget about their elder queen's horrific dance. Well, well, well. Isn't the little queen enjoying the weather? Yes, it's a beautiful day. Oh, yes. I'm sure it is. I have a question for you. What do you see in the king? I see a kind and loving man who cares about me and my twins. Ha <laughs> ha. Oh, please. Don't be naive. He only married you because he was feeling sorry for you. Sangmo's blood started boiling. You don't know anything about my relationship with the king. He loves me, a word you'd never understand. You are bitter because your husband cannot rule. The next day, feeling sick with the state of affairs, Sangmo turned into an exotic bird again and flew away. The elder queen was overjoyed. She mixed a powder she had acquired from a warlock in the king's cup of tea. King Cam was grief-stricken because he had lost Sangmo. He did not notice the odd taste of the tea. He gulped it down. Soon after, the powder affected him and he started speaking gibberish. The elder queen's wicked plan had worked. Sangmo was gone. The king was locked in a cell. She put herself on the throne and became the interim queen mother. Now the only thorn in her path were the twins. The wicked elder queen couldn't bear the sight of Declan and Dolma. Find the twins, capture them, bring them to your queen. Yes, queen mother. The twins had gotten a whiff of something astray when they couldn't find both their parents during the day. They had already escaped the kingdom. Where do you think you two are going? The guards encircled the twins who were hiding in a nearby barn. They brought them back to the wicked elder queen. The wicked queen sat at her throne, admiring her crown before she wore it. She'd finally gotten rid of those pesky children. And now she can have the king all to herself. So, little ones, are you finally ready to meet your maker? Never. We won't let you hurt us. Oh, if you want to get rid of us that badly, do it now and do it quick. Oh, you're a cheeky one, aren't you? But don't get too feisty. I'm the queen here, and I always get what I want. The guards knew that the queen is not to be trifled with. But they also knew that these children were no ordinary children. I don't like this. These kids are weird. Take them to the high hill and leave them to the vultures. It was almost morning now. Declan and Dolma were handcuffed, and guards forcefully took them to the top of a very high mountain. You could see vultures circling the highest hill. They dragged them to the brink. No! Let us go! Very poor choice of words. No! Declan! No! Ah. As the twins hurtled down, a pair of golden claws swooped out and caught them in midair. It was their mother's arms. She had been watching over them all this while. Sangmo took Declan and Dolma to a land where the meadows were green and the rivers blue and kept them safe in an abandoned palace. The twins were now very happy to be reunited with their mother. Their only sorrow was that Sangmo could not change from a bird again. But the exquisite bird never left the palace and always kept watch on her children. One day, a trader spied on the decrepit palace where an exotic bird was keeping two children. 
he brought this news to the elder queen. My queen, I saw this bird with rainbow wings bring the twins fruit with my own two eyes. That's it. This time I will do the deed myself. The elder queen procured a magical tipped arrow from the warlock who had poisoned the king's tea with the mad spell. The next day, the wicked queen marched into their land with her army. Little did the wicked queen know that Sangmo had prepared her children for battle. They had inherited some of their mother's magic. Attack! On your mark, go! Declan magically turned into a towering 10-foot giant. He smashed his way through the soldiers like a bull in a china shop. While Doma let out ear-splitting shrieks that caused the soldiers to collapse in agony. This can't be happening. They are just children. Suddenly, a shadow falls over her. She looks up to see Sangmo, the bird, swooping down from the sky. Sangmo, in her maternal rage, glares down at the queen. You, I have something special for you. You think you can defeat me? I am the queen. I am invincible. No! Sangmo looked down at the elder queen, vanishing with a sense of relief. She has finally defeated her enemy, and her children are safe again. Doma, you wait here. You rest. I will go with mother to Cam and get father back. How quickly the children had matured. Declan went back to Cam. He got his poor mad father out of the prison cell. A mother's love prevailed, and Sangmo was indeed the true queen of Cam. And they all lived happily ever after. <laughs>